here's a 26. Uh, this is a huge nodule, obviously cellular with pockets of necrosis. So uh, my mentor, uh, Dr. Rowe, one of my greatest mentors, uh, uh, said uh, one of his tricks and clues for beginners in pathology is if you have a, a neoplasm that is hypercellular and has necrosis, it's malignant until proven otherwise. 99.9% .9 of the time we be malignant. There are rare exceptions, of course, but... And of course, at, at higher power, we can see obvious cytologic features, nuclear features of malignancy, pleomorphism, nuclear uh, enlargement, huge nucleoli, mitotic figures, uh, pleomorphic, very large nuclei, uh, variable size of the nuclei. I'm sure we can find atypical mitotic figures if we look around. So a very ugly, nasty looking tumor. Um, and it's kind of epithelioid in some areas, a little more plump spindle in others. I think right away, always, if you see malignant tumor with overlapping epithelioid and spindled features, melanoma is in the skin. Melanoma is one of the, is the first thing on my list. Elsewhere in the body, I still would put melanoma on my list, like a metastatic melanoma, because it has this tendency to overlap between uh, epithelioid um, uh, look and spindled. And then we can see here that there is nesting so that's another good feature for melanoma, but like we just talked about, carcinoma's nest also. So a poorly differentiated carcinoma could potentially mimic this. It'd be unusual to have this pattern, but if you have any doubt, <clears throat> do a stain, do a SOX 10 or a, S, uh, or a, a MART1 or S100. If, if you see obvious pigment and melanoma in situ component, well, I think you've got your answer. It, it, to me, I feel pretty comfortable in that. But the reason I would say that is if you have any doubt melanoma versus maybe a carcinoma, a, a melanoma of this size is a, a very serious uh, problem and a, a high risk that the patient will develop metastases and die from this. So it is a very serious life-changing diagnosis you're giving someone to give someone a, a nodular melanoma with a Breslow of, you know, whatever that is, 15, 10 plus millimeters probably, I don't know, eight or 10 millimeters maybe. So here, um, sometimes in these big nodular melanomas, they grow quickly and bulge up from the skin. And you can see it's kind of weird. It's super thick, but look, it doesn't really go much deeper than the normal epidermis next to it. And this is common, these polypoid uh, melanomas that are nodular that get ulcerated on the surface and that look clinically sometimes amelanotic or look like pyogenic granulomas clinically. That's why always, I think, in my opinion, a pyogenic granuloma or something apparently pyogenic granuloma clinically, in my opinion, should always be biopsied because a melanotic melanoma that's that's ulcerated can look identical clinically. So to me, I feel like anything that looks like a PG um, that's not ever been sampled should re should receive a biopsy. That's that's my viewpoint. So these lesions can be really thick, but sometimes still confined to the dermis. This one is going to the subcutis, um, but I find that over top they they can get really ulcerated or thinned out epidermis. Sometimes the epidermis I think erodes away, ulcerates, and then regrows a little bit. So the melanoma in situ component over the top some, is oftentimes lost. So you may not see any in situ and have to go out to the periphery to look for it. Okay, and a true nodular melanoma. I think it was Dr. Clark. Uh, Wally Clark of, of a very famous dermopath, the one who invented Clark level and, and many other things uh, that he published, was the one I think that said that the, to be a true nodular melanoma, the in situ component shouldn't go more than three reedy ridges beyond the dermal component. I'm not exactly sure here, but I guess it doesn't do that. But in real, uh, you know, it, so if there was say a superficial spreading out here beyond the edge, we would actually technically call it a superficial spreading melanoma, even though it has a large nodule in it. I kind of feel like this is a, A, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change anything for patient care. Um, melanoma, the thing that matters is the Breslau thickness much more than the subtype, really. The subtype is kind of a microscopic pattern for pathologists that generally doesn't matter clinically, <clears throat> with the exception of maybe lentigo maligna, because they often extend way beyond and need wider margins of clear. But otherwise, I think most of the, the published literature supports that the subtypes of melanoma, based on their old school patterns, nodular, superficial spreading, lens gum malignant, doesn't change their prognosis. Uh, the depth of invasion does, the thickness. All right, so obvious ugly cells there. And melanoma in situ here with pagetoid spread and nests. So now we know this has got to be melanoma. Um, you could still do a stain if you needed to, but uh, that's a nodular melanoma and don't forget to look at the whole specimen. It's easy to stop when you're looking at this big thing in the middle, but always look at the edge because sometimes you will get other information. In this case, this is a microsatellite lesion. And a microsatellite, that used to be like a size criteria. I think that has been removed 
from the AJCC staging manual, but you have to have a, 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 a growth of melanoma in the dermis. So it can't be like a intralymphatic or, or, or perineural focus. It has to be in the dermis itself. And it has to be obviously divided from the main melanoma by an area of normal dermis. Now this dermis has solar elastosis, but by normal, I mean not dermis that's inflamed and scarred or regression-like, because then it might actually be just an area that's been detached from the main melanoma by regression, right? So there needs to be, and, and also you need to, in my opinion, need to make sure that you're not dealing with a tangential cut. Sometimes melanoma can big melanomas can grow in a complex fashion and depending on the angle of the cut you can have an area down deep that may connect up to the main melanoma but just be deeper in the section and you just can't see it or the next block over <clears throat> the reason that we should be so very clear on all those rules and i know you know all this caleb i'm just belaboring it for the people on on kiko and youtube who are watching this later uh, because i don't think i've really addressed this before the reason is that a micro satellite lesion or or a, a macro satellite that you can see clinically, or an in-transit metastasis that's, I think, defined as more than two centimeters away from the primary, any of those things, they basically count as the equivalent of a lymph node, a mes metastatic melanoma in a lymph node for the purposes of staging. They count as an N score. And in fact, if you have a lymph node plus, even one lymph node, I think, I always have to look these ends up to make sure I get the subtyping right. But a, a micro satellite or a macro satellite or in transit met plus a positive lymph node bumps you uh, well beyond a positive lymph node would be N1, depending on the letter, the little letter would depend on the some other features. But <clears throat> uh, if you have a satellite plus that, plus a lymph node, it bumps you all the way up into um, N3, actually, I believe. So it's a, a significant jump to have a satellite. So for that reason, you want to make sure that if you call a satellite, it, you're sure it's a satellite, okay? This is definitely a microsatellite, no doubt about that. All right, so there you go. I think that I looked at that the other day. I think that I wasn't sure if that was actually a satellite. A microsatellite, I think it probably is. I thought maybe it could be floater at first, but it actually looks like it is in the tissue there. All right, so there we go, nodular melanoma with a microsatellite lesion.